Stitchy Niche. I'm back for an update video. Today is September 7th and it's been a while since my last video. I have no excuse. I just couldn't find the time to sit down and gather everything that I wanted to show you and to talk about my stitching. Um, it's hot outside today so I came up with the best excuse ever. I can't go outside and get sweaty because nobody wants to see a sweaty floss tuber and I have to do a video. So I'm here to share my crafting with you that I have um, completed over the past month or so. Um, update on life update before I get started on crafting. Uh, Patrick, our older son, has moved to Orlando. He has been working with the Disney College program for almost a month now and is enjoying it. He's working at Epcot in food service, primarily in the International Food Festival, um, which is cool. And um, I get to, you know, we talk to each other probably once every other day or so. He's doing really well um, adjusting, you know, it's an adjustment. I'm, I'm doing okay too. I cried a lot that Monday that he moved into his apartment because we, you know, they don't want parents coming with them to their new apartment. So we helped him load everything into his car well, let me back up. We went down on Friday and spent Saturday and Sunday at the parks. He spent most of the time by himself because he's like, I'll see y'all later. So I guess he was enjoying being independent. And um, we, that Monday, he got up early and had to drive over to the apartment complex that um, he was going to be staying in, um, which was nerve wracking for me because we live in South Mississippi where, you know, we have traffic, but it's not like big cities. There's not a lot of interchanges. Um, you know, he drove back and forth to the Gulf Coast campus, which is about an hour and a half drive, um, the last two years of his bachelor's degree. But he would get on 49 at a red light, which is an easy transition, and then he would drive all the way down 49 and then to a red light and turn on the, you know, another highway, but it was all just really controlled. And that's not the way it is in bigger cities. And so I just worry, I've worried myself sick about him driving, but he seems to be fine. Um, he drove from most of the way to Orlando. I drove some, but he drove most of the way. And his car has all the little bells and whistles about, you know, blind sight, blind spot alerts and things like that. So I know he's going to be okay, but I was telling my younger sister, Bridge, and I'm like, I just see a five-year-old driving a cozy coupe in the middle of the interstate. That's what I see when I think of my kids driving you know, in these big cities. So he's doing fine. Um, I'm adjusting to him not being here. There's a lot of chores that I have to do, including feeding some very picky cats. I got yelled at by the cats because I didn't do something right, but I'm learning. I have to clean the litter boxes now, so I really do miss Patrick. Um, Nicholas is doing great. He's in his junior year at USM, so he's got two years left. He's working a lot, though. He works at the bookstore on campus, um, and he is, he's a leader by nature, and he's very calm, and he is very um, rational. And um, they like that about him. So they give him a lot of, of responsibilities that they're not paying him to do, but he does it anyway. It's a lot like his mom. So um, school has started back. I have, I'm sad, but I'm, I'm doing okay. It's all right. I'm only teaching three large classes this semester. I have about 150, a little over 150 students in each of my three um, large classes. And then I have a small class that I'm team teaching with an, uh, another faculty. It's an honor seminar course, so not too bad. I'm not having to coordinate the lab, so that's great. Um, and, you know, the semester's going to go pretty quickly, which is fine with me. Um, my travel plans this um, next semester, I'm going to a retreat next weekend in Memphis, Tennessee. Get to see Katrina. So excited. And then I'm going to visit Patrick in Orlando 
Disney trip in October, the first weekend in October. I'm actually going to the um, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm going to the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat in October. And I'm thinking about going to the International uh, Quilt Festival in Houston, Texas, which is the first weekend in November. So I was looking at that last night. I think I'm going to go. I was talking to Hobby, and I'm like, hey, do you want to ride over to Houston with me? It's about a seven mile, seven hour, seven mile, seven hour drive. Yeah, seven hour drive. So I'm thinking about doing that. That might be fun. My schedule this semester gives me um, free time on Fridays. So I don't have classes on Fridays. And I've tried to schedule most of my meetings on days other than Fridays. So it's easy to travel on Fridays. Um, so we'll see. It'll be fun, but um, I've got a lot of stitching updates, crafting updates. So I guess I will start with FFOs. So let me think. I have one true FFO, and it is a Brenda Gervais piece, Boo to You, but I got to give you a backstory. So originally, I stitched this. This was my August 1st start. When I remember, those of you who've been watching my videos, I do a new Brenda Gervais start the first of each month. And um, Boo to You was the um, August 1st start. And I finished it pretty quickly because that is the cutest little, oh my goodness, this is a cute little piece. And I was thinking about how I was going to finish it. I went and bought the ribbon at Hobby Lobby that is um, on the cover of the piece that she used in her little pillow finish. And I'm like, okay, I'll just copy Brenda. I mean, Brenda knows what she's doing. Last weekend, last Sunday, I went to pick up my groceries at Walmart and I have it all worked out that I can go to Target before I pick my groceries up. So if there's anything I forget, I go by Target and pick it up. Well, I walked into Target and at their, the front of the store where they do the dollar spot, I guess, they were putting out their fall Halloween stuff, and I found a pumpkin-shaped checkerboard. I'm like, that's, I'm using that. That is adorable. So I got it, and I finished my Boo to You in a very um, priscillified way. So I'm very proud of it. So here is my finish. Isn't that adorable? She's so cute. Give, there you go. So this is a checkerboard, and these, and th these are one of the checker sets. So they have this one, this color, and then they have some that are the color of this pumpkin. So I think it turned out really cute. Originally, I had done this with the homespun on sticky board. And I made these little flowers with just this as the center. And I sent a picture to Bridget and Lisha, who are the other two lobes of the collective brain. That's what we call ourselves because we can't make decisions without consulting the other two. And usually, you know, it's that emergent property of the three of us together can be much more creative than us individually. And... They sent back and said, no, that's not good enough. We need to do more. And they both agreed that, that I needed something more colorful over here. And Lisha suggested yo-yos. So I did the yo-yos. And then Lisha also said I had to do a bow. And Bridget, I think, suggested the raffia. And so I did that, and it still wasn't good enough. And I have this potpourri that has leaves and, uh, and acorns and all kinds of fall plant type stuff so I pulled these leaves out and I bought these berries the other day at um, Joanne and I glued it all hot glued it together and I think it turned out adorably and you still notice this notice this more now because I showed my husband this piece before I juiced it up some and then I just showed it to him about an hour ago after I finished this. And he said, oh, you put this on there. I'm like, no, that was on there before. He's like, well, I just remember seeing these without the black on it. 
So I don't know. He said now he notices the the little pumpkin girl more. So I think she's cute. And this will be on display for my Halloween. So that's my one FFO. I've got some um, FOs. So I'll start with those. And I've got another Brenda Gervais. This is Witch Hazel Sampler. I stitched this on the way to and from Orlando. I had started it. It was one of my whips, but I finished it because of that long drive. I just think she's so cute. So that's Witch Hazel. And let's see. I'm just going to pull them over here as I finish. Um, another thing that I stitched was this floral cup pin cushion. I got bored with all my whips one day. I'm like, nothing is good. I don't want to stitch any of this. You know, I was just moody because my child moved out of the house. So I pulled this out and I stitched it up in one day. <laughs> so there it is. Isn't that pretty? And I got the cup and everything. It comes as a kit. So I will FFO this. I've got it all set up over there. So maybe I'll get to that later today. Got to go exercise today. Got to go out in that heat. Um, I have some other ones. What do I do with them? They're under this stack. Sorry. I, like everybody else, I've recorded and then decided they don't like it. So I'm re-recording. Put on the hat by Hands On Design. Isn't that cute? So, Lisha, Katrina, Ray, Tangela, Sharon, and I, and Bridget, are all stitching this together. And um, we started August 13th, August 12th, no, August 15th. And Lisha, boom, she had it done. She's like Gary over there, stitching them up so quickly. Um, I did change the color of the broom this was black originally. I changed it to a straw color. I think Lisha did the same thing, so I copied her. And um, Ray is finished, I believe. Katr uh, Katrina's working on the hat. Sharon, I don't know if Sharon has finished or not. But we have a little group on Facebook we're supposed to be posting pictures to. Um, I thought I had some other finishes. I guess not. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, I did have another finish. It was um, for the Fair and Square Exchange, and um, I've already mailed it. If I have a picture, I think I took a picture, but I'll put that picture here. That is a Barbara Anna piece from one of the um, primitive uh, punch needle and primitive uh, stitching. What's the name of that magazine? Punch needle and primitive stitcher magazines. Um, if I remember, I'll look it up and I'll put below which issue that particular one came out of. I think it's called Spring Basket. But I thought it looked kind of fallish, so that's why I stitched it. I thought it was really cute. So we did. if you're not familiar with the Fair and Square Exchange, this was something that was started, I think, by Vana, like in 2006 or 2007. It's been a while. Where people were matched up and you would stitch a square... Uh, two pieces. One was a design that was, you know, had to fit in a certain size. I think it's like 60 by 60. And then the other square had your name and your where you're located in the date, something like that. And we would exchange these. And Mama Joan was talking about her fair and square um, exchanges, showing some of those. And I showed some of mine. And um, actually two people contacted me that watch my videos that had sent me those. One was Kay and the other one was Jill Farrell. So um, it was kind of fun to to hear from people that I actually got exchanged from years ago. So um, Joan and Kelly restarted the Fair and Square Exchange on their, what is it, JK Cluck, Stitching Cluck. It's a Facebook group. And um, so I've done two exchanges. The last exchange, I was paired with um, Joan. How exciting. We have very similar stitching styles or taste. And um, this time, I was paired with Shelly, who lives in Mississippi. And so here are the squares that I got from Shelly. 
Isn't it cute with all those farm animals? And then this is her initial with the date, my initials, her initials, and then the little chicken. So that's really cute. And I'm going to finish this as an ornament because um, I just think that's adorable. So she, she actually lives in the same town that my brother and sister-in-law live in, in Madison. So um, that was another finish. And then I've been working on several things. I do feel like that I have more finishes, but okay. So I've got some other finishes that aren't cross stitching. One of them I've already shown, um, but I've got it almost FFO'd. So this is a um, applique quilt, quilted item. It's kind of like a table runner that was in the Blackbird Design Weekend booklet. So I finished this about a year ago. It's all needle turn applique. Just love it. Well, I didn't know exactly how I wanted to quilt it. So I took it into a local quilt shop, the Stitching Post in Hattiesburg, and was talking to the owner and said, I really want to just have it machine quilted by somebody who knows what they're doing. And so she put me in contact with someone that she felt would be better at it. And her name's Ellie, and she quilted that for me. Isn't that gorgeous? So now I just need to put the binding on. I just love this. So. so that got me thinking about having somebody else do the hard work of quilting it. So I don't remember if I've shown this on a previous video, but Teresa and I went to a, another quilt shop, the Fabric Dock, which has since closed and is being reopened as a different shop to do a lesson, to take a class on this, using this special ruler to make these quilt blocks. Um, it's called the Alberta Quilt, and it's the Stripology rulers. And um, we made like three blocks at the class, and then it sat in my closet. Well, I decided I'm getting these quilt projects finished this year, as many as possible. And so I spent a good part of the week last week in August yeah probably last week in August finishing that quilt top piecing everything together and I got it completely done so I went in last weekend to pick up this from the lady that quilted it we were meeting at the quilt shop and I decided I would take a couple of projects that I finished and see if I can find some finishing fabric you know the backing fabric so I took that one and I bought the fabric and I was talking to them and um, you know they were asking me how I was going to quilt it and I'm like I don't know I said Ellie how much would you charge me to quilt it she gave me a ridiculously good price I said well that's worth the tears and the frustration that I would have trying to do this on my own so I don't have it with me now but she has it and hopefully in a week or so I'll get that back um, the other thing I took up there to, to find backing fabric is another applique. This is a wool applique, and it has been, the parts have been hanging all over my wall, so if you've watched previous videos, you've seen parts of these, but I finished it finally. This is the um, Wooly Mysteries cat quilt from Little Red Hen, so I'm going to stand up because it's big and I can't show you all of it. In one thing maybe I can so here it is so this is the finished project and the way this works is that the shop owner would release a block a month and you could order the wool kits from her or you could just use your own fabrics and I just ordered it from her so I finished it I also ordered the finishing kit which was all the fabrics, coordinating fabrics to make those quilt squares and the um, borders and have it done. And I bought the backing fabric at the shop the other day, but I think I might give it to Ellie and let her finish it for me, quilt it. Because 
I don't know. When I go pick up the other one, I'll take this and see what she says, if she's willing to quilt that one for me. So that's two quilt tops that I finished in the past, um, since the last month. I'm so happy. I have one more quilt that I want to start. It was the one I picked up at um, Country Sampler. And then, of course, this one here. I've got three quarters to go. So I want to work on that one as well. So I've been productive, but it's time to start working on my textbook. So I have 10 chapters that I have to revise. And we're doing some major revisions. So I got to get to work on that. So I got to quit crafting and start doing what what my real job is. So, but um, so those are some of my other finishes. Um, before I should talk about my plans, I also want to show you some of the finds that I had when I went on the world's longest yard sale. So I'm going to put in a couple of pictures here. And those pictures will just kind of show you the setup and the, the kind of the, there's just stops all along the way that you can see just all kinds of everything you can imagine. Patrick and I went on the yard, went to the yard sale this year together and we left on the 4th, I think, of August and we spent all day Friday and all day Saturday driving up along that pathway. We started in Decatur, Alabama. No, we did not. I'm thinking of Marlene and my local needlework shop. Um, we started in Gadsden, Alabama and drove up to almost to Chattanooga. Where did we stop? We stopped in Fort Payne, um, Alabama. And it really wasn't that great, that part. It was a lot of um, just yard sale stuff. Um, Patrick was having a great time because he collects VHS tapes of old movies and people were just like, we'll pay you if you take them. But he got a ton of movies on VHS. Um, he, has a, he has a player. Everybody's like, how's he going to watch them? He has a player, so he was able to watch them. Um, and he's a movie guy. so um, We ate at this really great place in... Um, Fort Payne, and I can't remember the name. It's an antique shop. It's got a little a little sandwich shop attached to it. Um, food was great. This is the second time we've eaten there. We ate there last year, too. And then we spent the night in Chattanooga. So we drove the rest of the way up to Chattanooga. Um, and then we got up the next day, and we drove from Chattanooga up to Soddy Daisy. I think that's where we stopped. Crossville. We made it to Crossville this time, I think. The second day was great. I didn't buy a lot of stuff, but I saw a lot of really neat things. And um, I have to show you one of my absolute favorite finds. So I collect cast iron things. Molded cast iron, you know, you can find the little animals. And I put them in my flower beds. It's very, reminds me of New Orleans. If you've been to New Orleans, you know that a lot of the, um, gardens they have like lots of collections and so I have all kinds of uh, cast iron animals from flies and ants to cats and rabbits and chickens and every, I even have a meerkat so when I find cast iron things I that are good prices I usually buy them I bought a cast iron cat that um, is out in the flower bed and then I found these and at first I didn't know what they were but I knew they looked they, you know it looks like a pine cone I'm like, these are really cool. And it was in a booth that was obviously, it's an antique dealer. And um, I got them and I went up to him and I'm like, you know, how much are these? He's like three bucks. I'm like, a piece? He's like, no, together. I'm like, sold. Um, and I showed them to my dad. I'm like, what do you think those are? He goes, oh, those are the things that hang off of a cuckoo clock. I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. So that is probably my favorite thing. And the way I display them is I have this bowl and um, one of my customers and I've been talking about my collections because I'm a collector of things. And in my downstairs guest bathroom, I have this bowl and I bought this wooden bowl in San Francisco about 
10 years ago. I was on a, at a conference. And when I go to different places, this probably isn't the best thing to tell you, but I pick up nature. So I pick up different types of cones from trees. I have all kinds because this is what I collect. It's cheaper as long as you don't get caught. And I collect acorns from different areas. And so let me see if I can show you without spilling them. So I pick up at least one or two acorns from each of my trips if I can find them. And I've started labeling them. Let me see if any of them. I haven't labeled all of them. But like this one. Can you read that? This is Boston 2018. So last year my husband and I went to Boston for um, fall break and I picked that up. I have acorns from New York City, from um, Central Park. I have acorns from Alabama, Tennessee, Texas, all kinds of places. And I just put them in here and I even picked up some I don't think I picked up any acorns while I was in. What did I pick up? I picked up something in Portland, but no, I couldn't find any acorns. So isn't that cute? And then these just sit in here with them. Yeah, there they are. So very pretty. Okay, now, my whips, what have I been working on? Well, I'm in the School of Magical Stitches, so I've been keeping up pretty well with my stitching homework. And this week, we had to stitch on three different things. One was, let's see, something that the, had, you had to pick the project based on the term Dursley. And it had the um, project had to have either the designer's first name started with one of the letters in Dursley or the project's first name. So I picked Hannah Carter um, from Shakespeare's Peddler and I stitched on that. And I'll put a picture in here. And that's my progress. And there's a big problem with that. So if you're familiar with Hannah Carter by Shakespeare's Peddler, one of the things Teresa loved about that is the eyelet alphabet. Well, I was stitching that and I've put it away. I mean, I started it probably two years ago. Pulled it out and I was looking at it and all those large letters that look like they're eyelet, those are not eyelets. I stitched Smyrna crosses. I'm like, Jennifer, what were you thinking? You've heard people say eyelet alphabet how many times, and you went ahead and stitched the wrong thing. However, I was just listening to Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, and she said that at the um, summer school, they were given permission to use the smeared crosses instead of the eyelet. So I subconsciously knew it was okay. There we go. So that was fun. I worked on that in a couple of days and got my 300 stitches. And then the other project, that well, the other one we have to stitch on is a project that we vow to finish by 20, the end of 2019. So that's what I've been currently working on. And that, that project is Brenda Gervais. Grateful, Thankful, Blessed, because this is on my Year of Whips list, and I did not have very much done. Actually, when I started this two days ago, or picked this back up two days ago, I just had that L, this corner, and T-H-A-N, and that moon. So I stitched on it last night, and that's my progress. So got a lot done. I'm going to do some of the pumpkin and these leaves tonight and probably fill in the rest of these letters. Can you see that? There we go. That's better. And I really had fun stitching this. 
It's so cute. So that is my progress on that project. And um, those are some of the threads. I'm doing a lot of substitutions with Victoria Motto sampler threads because I have a lot of Victoria Motto sampler threads. Plus, I love stitching with them. So I've been substituting those. And then there's a third part of the homework, but I don't remember what it is, and I didn't bring my... What is it? Something you vowed to finish, Dursley, and blah, blah. I don't remember. Anyway, there's a third one. If I remember, I'll tell you next week, because maybe, maybe I can get on a schedule of doing these videos once a week. Maybe. Um... The other thing that I've done, because I, you know, I was sad my son moved out and I got all just pitiful and I'm just like, I have too many whips and I'm just, you know, crazy cross stitcher. I'm going to focus on some projects and get these things done. So I got that one done that I showed you, the witch hazel, because y'all need to see it again. So I got her finished and I picked out another one that I want to finish soon. And I have talked about this one before. It's Three Black Eyed Susans by Brenda Gervais. And so I've, I've done a lot. It doesn't look like it, but I have done a lot. So I've got all those leaves done and that crow and um, some of her purple dress and these letters down here. So I'll work on this one a little bit each day till I get it finished. Okay, so that's that. Oh, I want to mention this. This is Teresa and I met for lunch yesterday. And um, I don't remember. Let me, let me look this up. Hold on one second. It's from Rebecca Wilder. She sent me and Teresa project bags. So Teresa delivered this for me. Isn't that adorable? I have a chicken just like that. That's a Plymouth rock, Bard Rock. I have a chicken just like that. I have a hen. That's a leghorn. Um, I'm going to say that looks like a, a Whiting's True Blue. Because I have chickens that look like that, and that's what they are. But I love this. This is a great. Thank you, Rebecca. This is amazing. I, I mean, it's so sturdy, and I immediately started using it. So thank you, Rebecca. Um, now that I've got this out, I'll tell you, y'all need a chicken update. Let's take a let's take a little break from stitching. Look at that. Chicken charm. Um, and get a chicken update. So I went crazy this year buying little baby chickens. I bought 15 online because they were cute and they were gonna lay blue eggs and green eggs. And I love Buff Warpingtons, so I bought a whole bunch. And then before they got here, I went to Tractor Supply, and I bought six hens, by the way. And then I was at my feed store, and they had baby chickens, and I bought six there. So that's 12 plus 15. That's 27 chickens. And then two of our eggs, I let the hens sit on their eggs, and two of them hatched. So... That added 19 chickens to our already nine. So we're up to 28. No, I have more than that. 30. And then McMurray sent me an extra one. So I had 31. That's a lot of chickens. So I decided I needed to get rid of some. Well, it wasn't too hard when I found out that the ones that I got from Tractor Supply were roosters two of them, and they were big boys, big red productions. I mean, they were, and they were like twins. They were very nice compared to the Lakenvelder jerk of a chicken that I already had that was mean to everybody. The two red ones were sweet. I never had any problems with them. They were just, they ate a lot, and they were a little too aggressive with the girls. So I decided I was getting rid of those. So I posted online. And nothing happened. And then my brother-in-law was talking to some guy. And he, somehow they talked about chickens. And he said that, you know, my sister-in-law has these chickens, a rooster she wants to get rid of. So they called me, and he was going to come over and pick up these roosters. I said, fine, you can come over. 
great. You can have the roosters. He's like, how much do you want for them? Nothing. You catch them, you can have them. So he finally came over and brought a net, and he caught these roosters, and I'm just shocked at how quickly he did. I got the mean one shut up in a pen. Um, that's a very southern way of saying it. I don't know how you say it anywhere else, but we shut them up in a pen um, before he got here, so he was able to get the lake Lakenvelder pretty quickly. And I know some of you are like, you shouldn't have gotten rid of him. He was mean, and I'd had enough. A year was enough. So um, he got the Lake and Velder, got their two red productions really quickly. I said, and by the way, I think I have another rooster. One of the babies that hatched out that I kept calling a hen, so she was so pretty. Well, it was a rooster, and it was a beautiful rooster. He said, yeah, that's a rooster. So he caught her, him, excuse me, and then um, he said, what about this gray one? I'm like, that's my blue lace that I showed pictures of, I was so happy of, about in the previous video. I said, I knew that was a rooster. It's a rooster. And he said, yep. I said, you can have him. So he caught that one. I said, you know what? If you want some hens, if you can, as long as I have at least one of each breed, you can take, you know, about eight hens. So he got those. So he took 13 of my chickens. And, um... I may have miscounted because I ended up with 21 chickens after he left. Um, so I was down to 21 hens. The next morning I went in there and one of my black cochins was dead. And nothing killed her. She just was right where she sleeps. She was just dead. And I was like, I broke her heart. I took her boyfriend away. I'm so upset. But So now I have 20 but they're so much happier. They all come out when I go out there. They don't run from me like they did before. Um, they're little bossy girls, but you know, they're just, they seem to get along much better. They, it's just, it's a better situation. Um, seven of them lay eggs uh, consistently. Two of them get out every day and I don't know where they're laying their eggs, but that's okay. Um, so I've got, you know, 20 girls and I still have my whiting's true blue and whiting's true green and I've got one two of my hens laying green eggs that aren't supposed to lay green eggs according to tractor supply so don't trust tractor supply telling you what their chickens are at least the one near us did not do a great job okay that was like five minutes about chickens that was a long intermission so let's get back to my um plans. So I am going to start a new project in October. It's going to be a new Brenda Gervais piece. I'm going along with my year of Brenda Gervais and for October my new Brenda Gervais start on October 1st is actually from last year. This is Field, House Hollow, uh, Field Mouse Hollow. I just love this. And I've been wanting to stitch this. So this is not out of print. It should be easy to get. I know I have them in my shop. I'm, I'm sure others have them in their shop. One thing I do want to point out is the laces. are uh, That is um, five pearl cotton from Weeks Dye Works in light khaki. I have it in, in stock at my shop, and I'm sure others do as well if you need that. But that's going to be my new start. So it will be, the hashtag will be... OCT Field Mouse Hollow South if you want to join me in that. Okay, I have been watching some new floss tubers, so I want to talk just briefly about um, two of the new ones I've been watching over the past week and a half. One is Stacy at 911 Stitcher, and that's all spelled out, and I'll link her channel below. She is from California, and she is really really interesting she travels she was has had a very interesting career um she's just really great to listen to and um she travels a lot and her plan is to take her take us with her on her trip so i'm looking forward to that um on her last video she was talking about going to um shepherd's needle which is a great shop so if you haven't watched 911 Stitcher, definitely go over to her channel and watch. She's really great. She's a natural at video too, so 
great job, Stacy. Um, and the second channel that I just watched a couple of days ago, um, you know, the name of the channel is Brenda and the Serial Stitcher. And these ladies are hilarious. And um, thanks to them, I've made some more plans for October because they say that it's okay to just start everything. And they're rule followers. Well, they're rule makers, which is close enough. Um, Serial Stitcher and I are like kindred sisters because we like to start lots of things and we love rules. And um, she said it's okay to start everything. So I'm starting a whole bunch of other things, which brings me to my plans for October. So dark, dark October stitching is the theme. Um, Cozy Egg and uh, Emily C. at Eclectic Possessions started that a few years ago. And so I'm going to participate this year because I'm going to start a bunch of Brenda Gervais, surprise, Brenda Gervais projects, um, Halloween projects that I've been wanting to do. And actually, I'll show you this. This is crazy. Um, let me get this. It's pretty heavy. I store all of my patterns in these kind of boxes. So when I find them that they're themed by seasons, that just makes me super happy. So I went through all of my charts and I have all my Halloween charts stored in here. And I would love to be able to start all of these, but that's ridiculous. So I went through and picked a few. And these are my starts for dark October stitching. They're all Brenda Gervais. I'm going to start Garden Good Witch or Garden Goody Witch, Bittersweet and Broomsticks, Pumpkin Brew, Hallow Day Inn, Spirits and Spells, and The Cat in the Moon. All of those are going to be starting in October, and I don't know if you noticed Stitchy Witch 42, a theme, but almost every one of them has a witch in it. The other thing I'm going to start is the first day of fall, I'm going to start Basketful of Autumn Time. And I had had that planned all year long, but it's another witch. But I'm so excited. Thank you, ladies at Brenda and the Serial Starter for giving me permission to start all those things. Yay! Let's see, what else am I going to do? I have one more thing that I want to talk about that, um, well, two more things, actually. Two more things. I, I do that to my students, too, and they're like, you said one. So, two more things. I just received the newest edition. Where is it at? Where is it? Excuse me. The newest edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. And I love this. This is one. I love this magazine. This is a great issue. I love these pumpkins. I love that. What else? There's a whole bunch of things in here that I want to do. I want to do some punch needle. I love that. And honestly, okay, this is stitched on 28 count linen. I think I'm going to get paid up. I think I'm going to stitch it on a piece of Ada, either Picture This Plus or Teresa's Ada, because that just looks like it should be on Ada. And I've been, I've been cutting in my shop. I sell the Picture This Plus Ada, and it is beautiful. Let's see what else can I find to show you? Because there's all kinds of cute stuff. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, so this is a good transition. That's adorable. The last issue, she, that's Barbara Anna, had this one. And I've been obsessing about this. I really, 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 really want to start that. So I think I'm going to start it in October as well, if I don't start it this weekend. I don't know what it is. I, that little crow is adorable, and I like the finish. Isn't she cute? So anybody that wants to stitch that, let's see, when are we going to start it? My mom's birthday is October 11th. Why don't I do that on October the 11th? So we'll start it on October the 11th. 
So if you have, this is the, which edition? Summer issue 2019. We're going to do Strawberry Time by Barbara Anna or any other Barbara Anna project you want to do. So cute. Look at this eye. So adorable. Okay, I'm obsessing over that a little bit too much. So I'm going to start that in on October the 11th. So there we go. All right, last thing. I want to talk about the Blackbird Design re-releases that occurred in August. Thank you, thank you, Barb and Alma, for doing that. There were charts that people were paying way too much money for, some of which were still available, some of them were not. But now those are available at your local needle workshop or your online shops. I have them. Everybody seems to have them. So if you're looking for Anniversaries of the Heart, um, the Garden Club series, the Magical Mystery Tour series, the um, Easter Parade, and the Stocking series, check either your local needle workshop. You can go to Jen Stitching Niche. We have them available or we can get them, okay? Um, but I wanted to show some of these that people have been talking about. Um, I stitched several of them when they first came out, or I'm in the process of kitting them up. But I'm going to start with one that I showed my last video, and that's the Garden Club. And I just love this. So I talked about this in a previous. This is um, on Autumn Blush from... Who is it? Silk Weaver. It's 40 count. And I stitched them all as one piece. And I've seen some people stitching them as individual pin cushions, and that was that's cute too. Put them all in one basket. That would be adorable. The other one I want to share with you is the Anniversaries of the Heart. And I showed this in one of my earliest videos. I stitched this back in 2011, I think. And um I finished it as one piece, stitched it all on 40 count. This is Meadow Rue, I believe, from Lakeside Linens. And it is one of my absolute favorite pieces I've ever stitched. I'm, I'm so proud of this. I put my family's initials in the blocks of either their birth date or anniversary. So it includes mine and my husband, dates, our children's dates, my parents, his parents, my grandparents, his grandparents, and then like if a sibling, one of my siblings, um, their anniversary, and then my nieces and nephews. I didn't put my husband's nieces and nephews because I'm selfish. I didn't have enough room. But that is beautiful. So if you're thinking about stitching it all together, it is worth it. Every stitch is worth it. It turns out to be a beautiful piece. Love, love, love it. All right, the next one I want to show you, again, is something that people have been talking a lot about lately. It's another Blackbird Designs, and it is Casting a Spell. So I finished this years ago because Teresa challenged me to a stitching race, and I wanted to beat her, but that is Casting a Spell. And it is so easy to finish and so worth the effort. And I got the box from Hobby Lobby and finished it, just like they, Barb and Alma said. And I display it on the wall because what I've done is I use command strips. And then right above these two pieces right here, it's just it's on the wall. And so really really cute all right I think that's everything I think I've shown you everything that I need to show you um, I hope you all have a wonderful last few days of summer hope you stay cool those of you going to the retreats that I'm headed to either in Memphis or in Iowa um, can't wait to see everybody we're gonna have a great time and um, I hope to see everybody soon Happy stitching.